Yeah, this is Matti Malminen from Kone Cranes uh, PLC headquarter in, in Finland. Thank you for Bureau and Dyke to invite me to speak in this uh, conference about the company view or exporters view about very important, my favorite subject, which is know your customer, know your supplier, and know your transaction. Uh, I have been working here at Connecrains for, for 11 years. And prior to Connecrains, my, my background was um, in the banking. I have been working for 25 years in different banks in Helsinki, Finland, mainly in trade and export finance. So this trade compliance came to my uh, responsibility something like eight, eight nine years ago here at, at Connect Cranes. Uh, today, I'm going to talk to you quite a lot about the practicalities. I will show you uh, the way uh, I am uh, explaining and teaching, educating Connect Cranes salespeople about these matters. And, uh, and uh, I will also give some hints to you how Connect Rains has done this uh, Know Your Customer uh, Matters. Uh, at Connect Rains, we have uh, two types of compliance, I would say. We have uh, traditional compliance uh, where we have also quite a few people uh, who, uh, and this traditional compliance is working under our legal department. But then we have separated trade compliance. And, and trade compliance covers in, in our company export control and sanctions and also uh, customs compliance. And uh, this uh, department is uh, reporting, and I am personally reporting to our CFO. And the, the idea of uh, changing this trade compliance seven, eight years ago from legal department to, to my department was that um, uh, my department is also in charge of uh, credit policy, global credit policy of the Connect Cranes. And then also with the trade and export finance uh, cases, uh, my department was involved a lot with our salespeople and frontline people and so on. And it was in a way natural that uh, this could be the home of the trade compliance. I know that in, in many companies, the home of the export control and sanctions might be uh, in the legal department or in the, some, sometimes in the treasury and, and, and so on. But we have it um, uh, here. Uh, when I started uh, to handle these uh, trade compliance matters and cre credit uh, policy matters, I, re I remember a story uh, when I went to, to our office in Dubai and the, the managing director of Connect Range Dubai, uh, he was a Swedish guy, he, he told to me that, okay, here comes the man with the title of uh, sales preventive department, head of sales preventive department. And that was kind of attitude in, in the old school times to the uh, trade compliance and compliance in general, that it, it really prevents the, the business and so on. But uh, nowadays and, and uh, since I would say two to three to four years, uh, our front lines have also understand that uh, it's, it's really not the sales preventive department. And uh, my idea of selling the, the uh, export control and sanctions and, and credit policy and know your customer, especially this know your customer to our sales is that if you, if you follow these uh, instructions and, and you do uh, the things like, uh, like uh, we, we, we teach them to do and what makes sense, you, you are able to increase your last row. So we are actually enable, uh, we are enabling you to make more money. So, so last row will increase if you do a proper uh, know your customer work and, and, and you will really earn. Uh, 
how you will earn money? Well, there are there are many ways, but what I normally tell to the salespeople is that, hey, think about uh, if we have a very challenging customer in a very, very challenging uh, country, it might be that uh, our, our competitor who is not doing a proper KYC, they, they might give up from the transaction and say that, hey, this is too difficult for us. And that's why we are not even uh, going to offer anything to this buyer. But when we do the work uh, carefully and then we realize and find out that, hey, we are good to go, uh, there are no things preventing us to, to sell. And then we use effectively also these trade finance instruments, then we might even win the deal to do this uh, very good uh, KYC work, what we, what we want to do. So that's one way to make more money. Uh, when you do the proper KYC work. Another thing is that when you, when you can avoid all credit losses, that's uh, of course naturally a very easy way to make money. So if we think about uh, you know, half a million uh, credit loss, uh, how much we have to sell again uh, that we get this half a million as a margin. So, so if we can avoid these credit losses, then we, then we are much, much uh, you know, better uh, to make the money uh, to our company and shareholders. Okay, uh, if we move on now uh, in our uh, presentation as well to the, uh, to the next level, and I, I give you a short uh, explanation about the company, Conecranes. In the first page, you can see a container handling crane. So that is one of our key products. So we are selling uh, cranes, uh, which, will, which are supporting uh, uh, companies in, in the container handling ports, and then also in the shipyards where they are uh, building ships. Then in the, in the next slide, uh, you can see <coughs> industrial crane or overhead crane. So wherever you have a factory, wherever you have a workshop, normally uh, you can see uh, these uh, overhead cranes. And this is really where we are extremely famous uh, of selling. Uh, Conecranes is a stock listed company. Uh, and and we, we last year, our uh, turnover uh, sales were, was uh, 3.1 billion uh, euros and, and we have been selling uh, to 175 different countries. So, so there are a lot of, lot of customers all around the world who are buying these uh, uh, grains from, from Kone Grains. We are uh, represented in 50 different countries. So we have Conecrane subsidiary, which is selling locally uh, these grains and, the, and, and services of the grains in 50 different countries all around the world. And we have uh, almost 17,000 employees. And, and the key cornerstone for, for all companies, and this is my big, big uh, advice and hint uh, to the companies, that most important paper which should be created and, uh, and done extremely carefully is the credit policy. So the companies really must put in black and white that how do we, how do we want to handle this work and, uh, and what are, who can make decisions, how do we handle know your customer work and so on. At Conecranes, we definitely have this global credit policy here on the head, head office level, but then we have also, in those 50 countries, we have also local credit policies created, which are following the, the global policy, but of course, due to the differences in different countries, there, there are some, some differences in the local credit uh, policies. But this is really the most important paper, and we have one section, we have three different sections in our, in our credit policy. <clears throat> and the first section there is know your customer, know your supplier. And, and this is what we are going to talk about today. And now I have the, the like the Conecranes uh, house of how we do the trade compliance and what are the five cornerstones 
uh, of five pillars of, of Conecrane straight compliance. Uh, I shortly go through uh, all of these five. First of all, <clears throat> with these 50 different countries, we have appointed uh, export control officer to each of these uh, legal entities in those 50 countries. Normally, it's the managing director of, of Conecran subsidiary. So they are the persons who are in charge. And actually, we most of us know that already according to the law, the managing director is in charge and, and <clears throat> responsible for, for these kind of things anyhow. But, but we have officially appointed them to be the, the uh, export control officer. And then from the head office level, which is actually on the right hand side of this slide, we have this head office trade compliance department, uh, which is actually on top uh, uh, headed by myself. But then I have a German uh, colleague called Thomas Hülsmann, who is running the, the, the uh, department uh, on a global uh, level. So, so they, in a way, local guys report to the head office. Then the second cornerstone from the left is the, that we have created the uh, minimum requirements and local re regulations. So, so we have defined here in the head office that what needs to be uh, followed, which countries, for example, are so-called no-go countries. At the moment, we have uh, four total no-go countries where we are not going to sell anything uh, until further notice. And then we have uh, also uh, defined something like 15 uh, be extra careful countries where we have also some special ways of working. Then the third one, and this is now also coming close to the host of this webinar today, Bura van Dijk, the screening tools, I mean, we are using uh, Orbis uh, screening tool to get the credit reports of our customers. And, and, but we are also having uh, some other uh, vendors who are supporting us, uh, especially with the sanctions. We have, uh, we have at the moment also integrated uh, system between our SAP ERP and then the third party uh, sanction uh, vendor, so that if in SAP order, any of the parties in the SAP order can be found from the, any of the sanction list, the order will be automatically blocked and, and, and so on. So that's also fantastic. But the key thing for today is the Orbis credit reports which we are taking in those 50 countries all around the world uh, in order to find out what's going on with our potential new customer. <clears throat> then the fourth one, product classification. We, we all, all, also have few of our items which are listed dual use items, not many, but few of them can be. And then we also have to remember that if we are, are selling to the weapons and embargo countries, uh, we have to be extra careful about the end use of our, uh, our products. And that's why this product classification is extremely important. Here we are also using third party to support us in our uh, uh, classification of the products. Here, the custom codes, the international uh, custom codes is in a very uh, important role. And, and of course, in our department, uh, we also have people here in the head office uh, who are doing the global customs compliance matters. And then the last one, but not least, is these people who are working in the head office um, uh, and running the show. Okay, I show you now the, the, these slides, the next slides are all those which I'm also telling to my salespeople when, when, I'm, uh, when I'm meeting them. And, and, uh, and then that's why you can see here the, the sentence that, hey, sales forces, you can or you actually should show this to your, uh, your potential customer. <clears throat> In Conecrane's annual report, which we just published a few weeks ago, 
uh, you can find it from the internet. Uh, we have also a section there where we where we say that because we are a stock listed company and people are inventing investing money to us and and we have shareholders who 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 put money to us so we have we have promised to them that Conecranes uh, applies a conservative credit policy and and today's subject we we also mention here that is Conec it is Conecranes practice to review customers carefully before we enter to any relationship with with our, our customer and and now i mean in the old school times uh, the sales people were telling to, to to me for example that hey it's an insult if they have to ask something from the customer that about their ownership or how they are doing and so on but now it's it's a new normal that everybody is asking information about the, you know, their, their buyers or their suppliers and so on. And then of course, with the help of uh, third party vendors like Pura Van Dijk, we, we can get the uh, comprehensive good and long reports, which will support us when we do this analysis. Okay. Uh, then so here are six uh, most important things what I tell to the uh, front lines that when they do this uh, due diligence work, when they have a new customer knocking on the door or new supplier offering some uh, uh, sub supplies to Conecranes that, hey, please buy from us. So, so then we, we say that it's a must, that the background of the new customer must be verified. And, and then we tell that, of course, we use independent third party service providers. And then for the, because we also have sales of uh, spare parts, we have a lot of service. One third of our turnover comes from the service. So there are quite small transactions as well. It doesn't really make sense to order like a hundred page uh, credit report from a service customer where the order amount can be 1000 euro or 2000 us dollars then we need to have something else and we have a light version which i will show to you slightly later and then i this is a very important for 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 us and for everybody that when we take this kyc information when we have the orpis credit report it it must be filed so, so we have had cases where, where our auditor or even authorities might, might come to us and say that, hey, can you show that what kind of uh, papers, KYC papers you had about this customer when you started your relationship? So, so it must be saved somewhere so, so we, we can show it later that, hey, at the time when we started to to you know have this relationship with this buyer you know these were the background information uh, why we decided to continue and then unfortunately we still have cases where our our frontline uh, are taking the orbis credit report and and then they tick the box that hey now i'm done it and I, I can continue, but that's of course crazy. It's very important that we, we read the report and we analyze it and see that, that if there are some early warning signals uh, that hey, something might go wrong. Hey, this is also important. And this is what I'm emphasizing to our sales guys is that sometimes these reports can show some challenging things but it might not be end of the world. We might still be able to do the business. But then, like I said in the beginning, if we use uh, some good trade finance instruments and we secure our receivables and we know that we are not going to have a reputational risk, then we might be good to go. But then the three more uh, important matters concerning this KYC analysis, uh, I always also ask our people to uh, go to the internet and, and do the Google search. And, and, and then, because if something 
dramatic would have happened to this customer, most probably it will be it can be found from the internet as well. So, but here we have to be extra careful and very selective. But at least that's a, some kind of source which you can use. Uh, if you can't get, for example, any third party information. So the next bullet point here is that there are few countries where, who doesn't disclose their information and then we can't find the customer from the Orbis or the, the Orbis report is uh, extremely minimal in terms of information. So, so then what we do or we recommend our sales guys to do is that then they just must interview the customer and, and make at least some kind of memorandum about the customer's background and perhaps ask some supporting papers from the customer and, and, and so on. And I, I think that it's also a fact that if you, if you try to sell your products to a new customer, new buyer, it gives also a very good uh, impression that, that you, have, uh, uh, you have familiarized yourself uh, for example, easy way is that you take the long comprehensive uh, credit report, you go through it, you, then you know the ownership, you know a little bit about the background and so on. So it gives a very good impression and then you might even also get some possibility, possible information about some other, other business things. And then uh, about these uh, early warning uh, signals, uh, starting from here, I have two slides about this one. Uh, if, if the customer doesn't want to tell anything, they say that they are not going to talk about their background, they are not going to talk about their owners, that, that's a clearly a warning signal. It's actually same when we talk about the trade finance and if we ask our buyer to arrange a documentary letter of credit to support uh, as a collateral about their payment possibility. And if they say that I'm not gonna give you any security from my bank, it might tell that these guys have something to hide. In, in this case, when they don't want to talk about their financials, there can be some some really bad things behind the, the company or in my trade finance example, the customer might not have any limits in their banks and that's why they, are, they can't get any securities. And, uh, and, and then when we use the Orbis report, uh, one very good thing in that report is this uh, flagging system. So, so if we can see this orange flag in the report, then we will uh, immediately open the flag and see that what is behind the flag. If we can find some really negative media uh, from their environmental issues or child labor challenges or frauds or, or anything, then, then that, that might prevent the whole business and we don't want to take the risk of the reputational challenges. And then of course, uh, the Google search might reveal some of these kind of hassles. And uh, then the last bullet point here is that, which I already mentioned uh, earlier, is know your uh, end use. Because when we are selling grains, you know, you can lift anything with, with our grains. So, so we must really know uh, what they are doing with our grains. And this is now coming back to these um, weapons and embargo, embargo countries, there are uh, plenty of those like uh, 15 to 20 uh, weapons and embargo countries. If you sell uh, to this kind of industry, your cranes, you have to, for example, here in Finland or in Germany, you have to apply for the license uh, to do uh, that kind of transaction. So know your uh, and end customer what they are doing. And then this reputation risk. I mean, uh, there are very bad examples that the media is really killing some of the, the companies when they have been doing business with, uh, with uh, challenging customers where there has been 
big, big problems. And, and uh, definitely we don't want to ruin our good reputation by, by doing business with this, this kind of customer. So this uh, famous old uh, series from TV, Hill Street Blues for selling that, hey, let's be careful out there. And that's also something what I'm telling to uh, our sales guys that, that naturally we don't want to lose orders. We, we want to really fight for the orders, but we have to stay out of the big challenges concerning the reputational uh, risk. Then uh, I promised to tell you about the small transactions and, and uh, I have one slide for that. And then I still have one slide uh, about to know your transaction. Uh, small transaction in our global credit policy. And you can see that we already have a version number 18 at the moment ongoing. So we are of course updating it, uh, world is changing. So we have to also change our, our global credit policy. We have a definition there for these small transactions uh, where we must check, analyze two matters. We have to uh, verify that the customer really exists. And, and for this uh, verification that the customer really exists, it's very good to have a third party. So of course there are countries where you can have a, where you have a national registers, for example, great registration numbers and this kind of stuff, you can, you can use those. But then you can also use third parties and double check that, hey, this customer who is now, who wants to buy these special grains or hoists from us, that they really exist, that they, it's not a fraud customer. And then every time we have to check that the customer is not in any of the sanction lists, applicable to that business unit, which is, is selling. And then we, we have also, uh, possibility in every single Conecrane subsidiary to do so-called manual screening of the new customer name, where, whether it's uh, in, in any of the, the sanction list. Uh, last thing, uh, oh, sorry, I have two more slides. Uh, last uh, subject is actually this uh, Know Your Transaction. Uh, well, we had KYC, Know Your Customer, KYS, know your supplier, very important. But this is uh, like I already explained uh, earlier, know your transactions. What are really the details of the transaction? You, I mean, there, there can be some, uh, you know, early warning signals about, you know, if, if customer is using uh, different forwarders, brokers and banks, I mean, you, you have to really be careful and if you can see some, you know, uh, strange things with these uh, third parties who are involved in the transaction, especially middlemen and all these kind of things, then you have to do your proper due diligence for all of them. And of course, here the third party credit report is, is something which really the, the helps you. And, and always you have to make really sure that what are their intention, what are they planning to do with our, our grains and, and uh, is the critical, is the end use really uh, critical? This is something what we, we really want to know. And do we know the whole supply chain? Where do we have to ship the goods? Do we know that if we ship the goods to one destination, Will they continue from there and, 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 and so on? So, so please be curious also about, uh, about the whole transaction and what the buyer is planning to do with your products. And now the last thing uh, we have, uh, I wanted to remind uh, about where I started this, uh, this my presentation that the most important paper is this uh, global credit policy or local credit policy or whatever, uh, but credit policy, black and white statement uh, about how our company is doing things. 
our our credit policy is something like uh, 20 pages so so it's it's quite a long one but this is some what just one extraction of of that uh, credit policy where we say that that hey uh, the the background of the new customer must be uh, checked carefully and and we use local connectance units can use third party information providers to get a clear picture of customers legal structure and the financial background and so on and so on so so this is uh, really something where it makes sense to use some money what what, what i mean by this that 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 money will be paid many times back when when we have a proper uh, systems and proper way of working in our due diligence work of of know your customer know your supplier know your transactions and uh, and it it really it 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 will definitely increase the last row which is also my message when I meet meet my new sales guys. I say that hey, let's do this well, let's do this uh, properly, and 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 then we can make more money, because a credit loss or a big reputation hassle in the in the in the front page of of newspapers that will really do bad things. So. Our slogan is that we, Connecrains, we are not just lifting things, but entire businesses. So with our, with our solutions and way of working, we, we can also, you know, increase the last row of, uh, of our customers. Uh, thank you a lot uh, for listening and uh, and uh, good luck with your due diligence work uh, in this uh, know your customer field thank you very much